can open in can layer two, or can open in can, uh, I'm sorry, J 1939. One other option we have is can layer two scan only. We can use this if we simply want to just read all of the packets that are coming in over the CAN bus network. Um, we're going to select Unican today and hit OK. And the next piece of information we need to set is the PLC network ID. Uh, the input for this is just a list of network IDs. So my controller 1 is going to be CAN bus ID 1, and my controller 2 is going to be CAN bus ID 2. Uh, if we want to know where to select these from, the COM dropdown, COM port and initialize is available here. And our UNICAN function blocks are available here. Okay. We've also included the PLC name in case we need to address this with a piece of software that requires a PLC name, such as VisiLogic. Okay. So our first function block we're going to use is the UNICAN check alive function block. As I mentioned, our controller 2 is network ID 2. So we've selected for this function block an input of unit 2. And we can see, again, we can select any of the controllers available on a UNIK network. And our output is going to be MB0. So what we should see every half second is that MB0 will go high for a single scan. Now we're using this with a timer network. Uh, TD0 is a two-second timer, and we'll go online and just look at this real quick. What we should see is that every half second, TD2 gets reset. And let's bring up TD2. And it's on my other monitor. We see the countdown go from two, and it never quite reaches 1.5 seconds. Okay. If I remove the cable, we'll see the countdown gets to zero. And now below we activate MB1, which is our status message on the HMI. So we're now displaying COM error with unit 1 on the HMI. If I plug the cable back up, since it's a uh, TD type timer, we reset the timer, MB1 goes low again, and we can continue communication. So this is simply the check alive function block. Okay. The next function we're going to look at is the UNICAN send. Now, MB3 is the button on the HMI, the send button. Uh, you'll notice the structure from all of our communication protocols, Modbus, if we looked at that uh, protocol. Uh, we're going to set MB5. MB5 is our send value request. MB5 will be set and stay high until we perform this network and reset MB5. Now, why do we do that? We do that because in the case of network traffic, a uh, situation where we can't send a message, we don't simply want this message request to go away. We want it to wait for the next available opportunity to send a message. And you'll notice that the UNICAN send function block has two other function blocks before it. First off, we have system bit 201. This is telling us that the high priority message buffer is full and we have to wait to send a message to it. So we use this contact to ensure that we can pass information through to the buffer. The second is a compare statement. So we're comparing MI0 to 0. Now what is MI0? If we pull up with F1 the help file for UNICAN, and we go to our UNICAN help file page, we can click on send registers, and we can look at the status messages for this function block. We see we're comparing to zero. Zero means the message success, the previous message was successfully sent. This is good. This means we don't have a problem. We notice that if we're not zero, we have some situation that's going to require us to wait till the message is zero. Uh, ID, I'm sorry, status one, message ready to be sent, but network is currently busy. Uh, two, destination ID number is greater than 60. So it's giving us some information that says there's a problem. Uh, we can't send a message, uh, and you should probably take a look at the status message and figure out what the problem is. Uh, so we'll close this. Maybe we'll keep it in the background. Uh, where did that MI0 come from? In our send function block, we'll notice that one of the parameters, the out parameter, is the status. So we first have to create our UNICAN send function block, and then we can link the status to the compare to zero. 
other parameters in the UNICAN send. Uh, well, first off is the destination ID. So again, we have two controllers. We are ID 1, and we want to send to controller 2. So we're going to select 2. Group ID number, we just leave this as 0. It doesn't, uh, doesn't affect our UNICAN communication, but it's a parameter for uh, CAN bus messaging. Uh, we're going to leave it as 0. Now, the source start address, in this case MI10, remember we're sending memory integer 10 to the to controller 2, uh, where we're sending 10 and 11, but we'll take a look at that in a second. Uh, so again, MI10, our source address, this is the address in our master controller that's sending to our slave controller. The source vector offset, we could use the offset if we wanted to offset based on MI10, meaning if I selected the value of 1 here, we would send MI11. If I selected the value of 2, we would send MI12. This can be useful for indirect addressing. If we want to create a scheme that's going to send MI10, and 11, and 12, and then 13, we can use this in that manner. Uh, also, if we simply have uh, different, uh, so, uh, different local addresses for information, we can just jump between them using the offset. Now, this, the, what we see is the description source start address. Actually, it's this, this is the destination start address. Uh, because we've already given it a description as MI10, and we're sending to our other controllers MI10, we can't have two different descriptions for MI10. But if I just click the next get unused, you notice the, the description is destination start address. Uh, this is the address that we're sending to in our other controller, our controller 2. Uh, I'm not going to change it from 10. Uh, we see below, again, the destination vector offset. So again, if we set it as 2, we would send MI10 to MI12 in our controller 2. Okay. And now below this, we have the length. And again, I mentioned we can send 16 mem memory integers with a single send message. This is where we select this piece of information. We're sending memory integer 10 and 11, so we've selected a length of 2. If we wanted to send 16 memory integers, we can select 16. But it's important to note that this is a vector operand, and what we select as the source start address is the start of the vector. So we can send between 1 and 16 integers in the vector starting at the start address. In the priority, we can select either high or low. In this case, we've selected high. Uh, what the priority does is send the message to either the high or low priority buffer. And the buffer can contain, each, each buffer can contain 16 messages. So we can have 16 messages in the high and 16 in the low. All of the high priority messages are sent before the low priority messages. Okay, so this is our send command. If we look at the next function block, it's the UNICAN message arrived. And we'll notice two parameters here. First is the controller we're interested in receiving a message from. So in this case, it's CAN bus ID 2. And the output is a memory bit that's going to go high. So when we receive a message from ID 2, MB2 will go high for a single scan. So we can go ahead and we'll go online and take a look at this. I'm just going to send a message from controller 2. We want to see this bit goes high, and it does. And we notice what it's doing is activating a three-second timer. After three seconds, it resets itself. And this is a message arrived binary text message we have on the HMI. So whenever we receive a message from ID 2, MB4 will be set. MB4 is a display variable, so we'll display the message, uh, message arrived. And with our timer 1, after 3 seconds, we're going to reset the message. So it's a simple way to notify us that we've received a message. In a real situation, we can use this information. The message arrives, and we can either copy the information to the appropriate uh, registers, or we can uh, perform some function. So again, these are the tools available, and it's up to the user to decide how they want to use them. But these are very, very useful pieces of information here. So, we should now take a look at 
the uh, unit ID 2 application. Give me a second just to arrange these windows so we can see this in a useful manner. So as we noticed uh, from the HMI, the programs are very similar, uh, actually pretty much identical, with the exception of a couple things. So what can we expect to be different here? Uh, well, the first off, uh, of course, is the unit ID number. So give me one more second here. Okay. So in net one of controller two, again, we have our Unican initialization. These need to be the same so we can communicate with each other. That means the baud rate needs to be the same. And in program one, we had ID one. Program two, we have ID two. Okay. PLC name for program one was PLC name one. PLC name is PLC two. Okay. So that being said, everywhere we have a function with an ID number, uh, we should match the, the opposite one. So again, we had unit ID two for the check alive. Now we have unit ID one for the check alive. Okay. The timer network is the same. If we continue down to the send command, We'll see that these networks are set up the same as far as the send goes. But the unit ID, destination ID, is different. Okay. And the information in the check alive, I'm sorry, the message arrived is also different. Okay. So very similar programs. The only difference is the network ID, so we can communicate to the appropriate controller. Okay, uh, I'm going to close these out now, and we're going to take a look at the EXRC1 example. Just give me one second to arrange these, and then download them to the appropriate controllers. <coughs> 